Hi, people. It is our third week in a row doing our YouTube lives. And we're kind of a bit sad because we're coming to the end of it. We should hide this. <laughs> I don't think you can see it. Yeah, yeah, it's on my lap. We're coming to the end of our mystery shawl knit along, the green clock. So, <clears throat> sorry, it's not me getting emotional about it. <laughs> I just, I had too many biscuits and chocolate before I came on for energy. And they're, they're coming back to, to bite me now. Um, but we're coming to the tail end of the knit along and there's still lots of knitting ahead of you, obviously, because this is a nice big clue and it's all in um, it's all in the the contrast color. So it's a little bit slower going because it's going to be mohair or lace weight. So make sure come in here and please let us know where you're coming from if you're joining the mystery knit along. Or the other two things that we'll be kind of talking about today is our Celtic Knits Club have shipped. So let us know if you got the notification and if you're all excited about that. And our Seasons Club launched at the end of last week. So I'm going to talk a small bit about the colors and the yarn for that as well. So if you have any questions on any of those things, just pop them into the comments because I have got my tablet down here. So I won't miss any of them. Um, but please, yeah, drop in. Hi, uh, um, Eileen, you're coming in from Virginia. Liz, hey, nice to see you here. Um, and we have got someone from Scotland, California, and Reno, Nevada, early in the morning. Uh, and Monica from Utah, you got your notice that the Kelting Lids Club has shipped. Uh, Magalie is who we have to thank that for that. That was a lot of shipping. <laughs> that was a lot of shipping. It's, just, it's always nice to see the massive bags of yarn just exiting the shop. And it's just like... Always feel bad for the postman. I, and the, our postman keep changing. So yeah. every every few every few weeks, there's kind of a shift in the postman. And so we have to retrain our postman in because every time a club goes out, we're like, okay, can you come a couple <laughs> of times to collect the bags? And they look at us like, it's like, you're exaggerating. <laughs> and then the day comes and they're like, okay, I see what you mean now. So yeah, it's I so think we- It's nice though, because it's like wrapping so many presents. And because especially because the of, of the bag it comes in, I always feel like I'm wrapping a present. Yeah. I feel like Santa Claus. <laughs> it's very nice. I really, really hope you receive yours very, very soon, because it's gorgeous. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, I think the colors are lovely because of the photographs. Well, anyone who was kind of on my Instagram stories, you'll see I popped up a couple of photographs of Valley Cotton where we went down to, um, to do the Celtic Knits photo shoot and that was thanks to Laura because I hadn't been down there before so there's a lighthouse in the distance we've got a pier you've got rocks a bay it's like it's got everything basically yeah have when, you been down there before so I've been down there but it was raining and it was a little bit less gorgeous <laughs> um, and we tossed around in the mud for three hours but yeah. I would definitely go again yeah <laughs> Yeah. You just have to pick your date, really. Exactly, and exactly. And you can never plan ahead. Yeah. It's Ireland for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and one of the really interesting things that is coming out this week is, we've not this week, in the Celtic Nest Club this time around, is we've got a notebook from Badly Made Books. But up before this, they're they're all they've been handmade by by Sean and by by his his crew down just across the road. Interestingly, um, but this time round, he's got a brand new product where it's a book stick, and so it's a bit like a traveler's notebook. If you come across those before, where you can put in sections and you can change them around. And I, I pinned him right here in the studio and I got him to do a video, which I will share with you in the next couple of days, but telling you how to assemble it, kind of basically showing you all the different parts, how you put it together. And it's very straightforward. It sounds more complicated than it is, gorgeous. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And it also means that it's a notebook that can keep changing. So if you finish it, you can take those pages out, staple them and fill in a new one. So you're actually able to keep it as a true usable notebook. So it's, it's actually a very, very, nice product he's he and we are all really excited about it i think we'll have to spread ones yeah, out in the... it's such a cork staple as well badly made books so it's just so nice that you get to work with them yeah so really really good yeah yeah, yeah. no he's yeah. he's great so i'm looking down here we've got south bend in indiana kathy got her shipment notice um, mel you're in love with the butterfly stitch it's so delicate looking but deceptively squishy oh that's an excellent way of look of talking about it yeah um 
And I was going to say, actually, that do be warned. Again, we're just giving our usual spoiler alerts here because we will be pulling up the section that Mags has worked on for the shawl. So if you don't want to see clue three, then turn your picture off. Just listen to the noise, listen to our words, and you can hear what we're talking about, but you don't have to see it. All right. Follow the sound of our voices. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us how you got on with, the, with your section of the clue I, this week. I also, I completely agree with the butterfly uh, just so much fun to work on and it was it was also really nice because a while back we, we were talking about color work and the way to kind of handle the tension with color work and I find that with butterfly stitch you also need to mm -hmm. take that extra step of like really spreading the stitches yeah. on the needle to make sure that you have enough space yeah and again because like, you won't yeah, get the nice effect of it if, yeah. if you if you pull the strands tight mm. there won't be enough to create an actual well a butterfly yeah basically. and and because again like this is the kind of designs that go really well when it's properly blocked mm. and stretched so i was really concerned the, fir the first row of butterfly because it was my first time doing butterfly stitch, yeah the first row was like uh, way too tight and I just undid it because there's like the, the, there's no way it's going to look good and it's going to kind of really stand the test of time if, yeah. I, if it's too tight yeah. so it was it was a lot of fun to make and that row of like picking up the three kind of lines it's just so satisfactory yeah. it was really really nice yeah because yeah. so it doesn't fun. look like anything because when you're going because like, the butterfly stitch is like most of it's in garter there's little bits in stockinette mm -hmm. stitch and you're bringing like it's it looks a bit strange because on the wrong side of the work you're slipping on the wrong side you're slipping the yarn mm. on the back of your work which is actually the front or the public side of your work mm. so it's it can be confusing just think about which is the front and that's where the strands are going to be but mm. you're working them on the wrong yeah, side it's not so completely intuitive yeah but then once you've done the yeah. first one you're like oh and i kind of really like that you can learn it very quickly and then yeah. kind of immediately add some of it and that's kind of yeah. what I did with mine and I found myself as well that I because of the fact that the repeats were easy to see if mm. you got off or if you lost a stitch you could see where's the edge of the mm. last one and you can kind of follow the stitches up mm. so it became it was easy to track your work after that first one mm. but yeah like what you're saying about keeping it stretched out is probably the most important mm. thing I think that it's it won't get puckered mm. and it's not going to and it's going to give you the nicest looking butterfly now one thing I will say is that there were times when I did it and realized that I'd only picked up two strands and not a third strand. Mm. So like in those cases, because it was immediately afterwards, I was able to drop the stitch mm. down and pick it up. But you could if you needed to and you had gone way on and you noticed one. I would suggest just taking some of the same yarn and sewing just a stitch a and lifting yeah. it up yeah. would do it because it's not like nothing's going to unwind. It's mm. just that you'll just have a strand that doesn't look like it's part of it. I, you know. I'm, I'm wondering like would it be would it be possible to do it over like more rows like right yeah. now we do only two but like, yeah absolutely three, yeah yeah particularly because because you're knitting the rows in between mm. you're not worried about rows you know things puckering because mm. if every row was slipped then it's kind of self-limiting mm. but because you're slipping on the wrong side row but knitting the right side row mm. It doesn't really, you could do as many as you want yeah, it. Yeah, it would be interesting to kind yeah. of push this to the maximum. Like, I wonder yeah. if other people have had done butterfly stitch before. Yeah. Because it was my first time in response. Yeah. <laughs> and you can space it out. Like, I've seen ones like this is a fairly all over texture, mm. but you can have ones where you can have it scattered mm. or you have it done just, you know, a couple, you know, much bigger spaces between. Mm. Um, you could yeah basically use it but you could even just do one like if you're yeah. making a jumper you could just do the where there's usually a little drawing you could just do one butterfly stitch there that could be really cute yeah, yeah. if it was a big one like and for a child cardigan or something that would be cute yeah, no, it would be. And I'm like, it looks best, I think, in mohair or in something very light that's knit oh, yeah. loosely. But like, you, you can do it in other ones. But mm. I think that it has more of an impact with oh. mohair. Okay. Um, but it's, I mean, I, I would encourage you to start swatching and we can share it with them. Ooh, ooh, ooh <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Put a pin on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look down here, make sure I haven't uh, missed any things here. Oh, oh we're. we're Liz and Cheryl are talking about the Celtic Knits Club and uh, and Liz has gotten it's the benefit of being in Ireland. It comes nice and quickly. Has she received it already? Yes. Oh, it's my God. Very fast postage <laughs> in Ireland. Uh, and yeah, Liz was saying she stretched out her stitches as well. Uh, good morning, Kathy from Staten Island. Uh, Mel was saying she put a stitch marker after every 10 stitches. Yeah. If you're worried about getting it wrong, that's really helpful. But I will say that after that first repeat, 
your actual previous repeats almost act like that. But at that point, if you've got the markers in, you might as well leave them in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Sometimes I leave them on the needles just because, just so I don't lose them afterwards. That's yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> to have a cat. Because I did find you had to go very slowly. I did have yeah. to go slowly. And mm -hmm. like there was times when I would do just a couple of repeats in an evening and then I knew I was getting tired because mm -hmm. I would start miscounting or I was losing stitches yeah. and like, okay, this is going away now. I find myself counting out loud so yeah. much. It's a bit, it's not socially super handy, but I, I do count out loud a lot and I have that kind of little rhythm in my head, that little music just, just kind of do. One of the things that I actually found, it was, it, it, maybe it was partially deliberate, but I found that because with this project, I kept everything in the same modules. So right. like it's the first one, the waves were in, in 10, ten yeah. repeats, but it was five and five alternating mm -hmm. back and forth. Butterfly is a different stitch pattern, but it's the same thing. It's still yeah, five yeah. and five. That was so and handy. It was, <laughs> it was really handy. It's, it, it, I find it easier that I feel that like if you've got a certain number repeat in a pattern, it's just you're kind of in it. You pick it up and it's like, oh, this is the 10 stitch repeat and it, pattern. It, the math is so much easier when yeah. you do multiple multiples of 10. And yeah. because I had to adjust a lot of the pattern because I was just doing smaller bits yeah. than the, the full shell. I was just doing my math to make sure like what would be before and after you know at the start yes. of the row and at the end of the row and I was like oh multiples of 10 that is amazing yeah it's just it's just very straightforward and it makes like this is a very easy pattern to modify size wise mm. so I mean like a big part of what I talk about why I explain how it puts together the idea of the biasing and putting in markers before and after the 10 stitch repeats is you can like you did you can make it for any size so if you want to make it smaller like you did it's very easy if you want to make it bigger you can because it's just it's basically you you just you make it match what you want on your needles effectively mm -hmm. um i must let me see what elsa louise hi from toronto nice to see you uh liz was saying when she picked up the strand Sometimes she had to put her thumb under to pull them out a bit before knitting them as they were impossible to see with the mohair. Yes, that definitely happened yeah. for me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mohair, I think mohair will, mohair is going to mohair. Like, yeah. You know, it's the kind of, it's the kind of things that it's just always that extra bit of. Yeah. And it's a little bit yeah, of wriggling. Yeah. Just like <laughs> the, the amount of times where I was like, oh, is that the main strand or is that the fluff that looks like a strand? I'm not sure. And you're like, Ooh. yeah, definitely have to, like, it's more on the, the kind of detail oriented side of knitting I find yeah. working with mohair for sure. just slow slow and yeah. careful mm. um, I know that like in terms of picking of picking up mistakes afterwards people were talking about the um the, the repair hooks you know just really short crochet hooks but actually any kind of a crochet hook could be helpful with this as well even mm. just pulling those up and putting it onto the needle mm. to knit with it and stuff like that mm. anything really that makes it easier is kind of worth pulling in mm. um Fiona, you have a particular skill for going off by one, even four repeats in. So you have a stitch marker. And <laughs> <laughs> Kathy says she likes both of our sweaters. <laughs> We've got these are actually both autumn knit alongs, interestingly, because oh, yeah. this was two years ago. This was um, the Hawthorne. Yeah, I really like this one. Yes, it's a very, a very wearable one. And I'm wearing Galanta. So there, yeah, and that was 2023 and you were mm. 22. So, yeah. but yeah, they were both autumn knit alongs. The colors are kind of nice together, actually. It's true. Yeah, they do go well together. Blues and reds, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Um, I was, we should move in now, actually, yeah. to take a look at the, do you want to pick it up? <laughs> well, other things, like, do we want to talk about the yeah. next step as well? Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So when we finished off the butterfly step, <laughs> <laughs> when we finished off the butterfly stitch we're moving into the final edging so off we go da -da. <laughs> this is a mini one now this is not it's the full shawl it's a very very tiny and one. we think that it could probably make a very cute neckerchief laura who has suggested that behind is totally oh, right i was thinking because of the butterfly kind of aspect of it you could pin that down properly and just frame it it's true. Because I just I was just thinking that because people do that with butterflies as well. <laughs> um but yeah, no, it's because this way we're we, we get to talk about the 
pass off as well. Yep. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So nor like a lot of people were panicking with the main color because they were running out of it or getting very low when you reach the end of this. And I didn't have a huge amount of it. I don't remember how much. I think I may have said it in the video, but I know it wasn't a huge amount. But like this one, we do there's a few rows of garter, then you've got you know very large yarn overs, and then you've got a pico bind off. If you're really short and very worried, you can work less rows of garter at the edge and kind of go straight into the bind off. But mm. I think you do need to have a certain amount of the main color at the end because otherwise mm. it's going to look unfinished. It won't have, it just, it yeah. needs to, you need to pull that color back up to the edge of the shawl, I think, you know? It's, it's definitely one of the more, one of the more yarn consuming bind offs though. Yes, like, this was, this was uh, Magalie's first time doing a Pico bind off. It was the longest <laughs> bind off I've ever made. <laughs> um, because you're always like, oh, I'm at the end. And just a quick, you know, bind off that's just easy peasy. And I was like, oh my gosh, that took such a long time. Just, just, you know, brace yourself. Fortunately, it is very pretty and it, it is well pretty. worthwhile. Abs absolutely. <laughs> of course, of course, I meant that too. No, it was, it was a really fun one to make and it's just such a nice kind of finish and kind of, Really interesting finish on the design as well. And still, I think it uh, needed yeah. it because yeah. I, I wanted I wanted to end with a flourish, but I didn't want a full I didn't want full on lace. So that's why I went with the very kind of a, you can see here the yarn overs. They're really when you block them out, they get really big. So this isn't all fully blocked out. No, but just we just that, got yeah. started to begin. Yeah. But the, see, they're really large, and then mm -hmm. the pico bind off around the edge was just to add a little bit of a flourish at the end. It's very wingy, like it's like it's adding another kind of wing, kind of very flowing, like like windy elements. Yeah. In the, and this in was the, the one as well when I was talking about when you're pinning, yeah. like individual pins, you can pin each of these individually mm. to kind of open up those yarn overs. Mm. Um, you don't have to, but I think it kind of adds a little bit to the end of it. But like you yeah. can decide what you want, really, you know. Yeah, like it just this really quickly, but you can already see the potential of, of how much of a stretch you can get out of it as well. And like it, it would definitely... Again, I know I keep saying this, but the blocking really is Makes part a big of the difference. design. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was fun. It was fun yeah. to make. Now, anyone who hasn't done a Pico bind off before, the reason it takes so long is you're casting on stitches while you're binding them off. So it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but you can modify it depending on how much you want the little peaks to come and how much you want them spaced between. So I, how many were cast on? I don't remember offhand in this. Was so, it three and six or three? Uh, I might for, be... for me, it was three and six. Three yeah, and six, the, yeah. The, the, that's kind so of that basically is you cast on three, six, three stitches like this. And then when you bind off six, you're casting those ones off again. And then another three. Mm -hmm. If you want them spaced out, you could add just plain space between, like maybe you cast off eight or nine and then do a cast on three so that one will space the picos out but i wanted this quite dramatically pico -y. yeah like it's almost like an upside down umbrella kind of thing like it's really nice yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah but it can it can vary and i've done it where there's all sorts of different spacing between them mm. but just and, and it's different for each one i do so this one it just this is where i landed with it basically mm. um it was it was yeah, it's a nice it's a nice way to finish a project for sure. Uh, Elsa Louise was saying, "What if we don't want a fancy end? Suggestions? You could just go with a, a a garter stitch bind off, and I'd use an edge if you want a really simple Icelandic bind off, or you could do an I core bind off as well." Um, if you wanted to keep it a little plainer at the edge. Um, I, I liked it because of, I felt again, like because it was open here and it echoed it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you wanted it a little less peek -y, you can put more bind offs in between as well. Yeah. Um, but I do, I quite, I've become a bit fond of the Icelandic bind off for garter stitch because it's not quite as solid as the I-cord bind off. Mm -hmm but it almost creates um, a reverse I-cord roll on the edge of it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. And well, the I-cord bind off is really nice, but I find that it's not the stretchiest one. Like you have to be super careful with your tension and be extra gentle and relaxed when you do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it wouldn't, like it will look nice on the edge, but it's it will make it harder to stretch the rest mm. of it out. Mm. Um, probably Icelandic does have a bit more stretch, I think, mm. if you, and you can size up needle sizes as well. Um, 
Liz is on the last repeat of the butterfly, just three stitches to go. <laughs> um, one thing as well with this is we've shown just a single color here, the sample that in a couple of weeks time, I will reveal the full shawl that I finished. And in my one, I've got two colors. So what that would mean, because this is one repeat, so it's 12 rows. So I had six rows in one color and then six rows in the other and then alternated like that, just six and six and six going back and forth. Mm. Uh, and but again, if you've got one, it's just going to be, you know, solid of one color, particularly if you've got a nice uh, one of the real variegated ones. Yeah, like the yarns is, down here is ever so slightly variegated as well. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's going to be slightly more variegated than mm. this in the pressed flower one. Like it's not a huge amount, but a little bit. But you got you'll see you'll have a nice bit of variation. Obviously, some of the brighter ones, it's even going to be more dramatic mm. than that again. Mm. Um, so do you think if you made this yourself, a full size one, would you go with the size or would you go for bigger or, um, or tiny I, like this? <laughs> no, no, I would go bigger. I think it would go bigger. Yeah. Um, but then you need to find a big enough blocking mat, I guess. True. Yeah, true. Uh, we Buy a few go. more of these exercise mats. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's definitely it's the first pattern where I felt really comfortable, like modifying things. Mm. I really enjoyed that. I think because it's not something I'm going to, it's not, you know, something that needs to be fitted. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I can go, like if it felt, it, it, I was very confident. Yeah. Just adding, adding a 10 row yeah. repeat here or there, or just taking that. And it, it, it was really nice kind of to be like, oh, I have a lot of agency over this. Yeah. Pattern and I get to kind of do that. I would go, I would go nuts. I would yeah. buy another main, main color scheme. And just, and just go, go for it. <laughs> yeah. But that's really nice to hear because that's actually really important for us for the mystery knit alongs. The mm. idea is to 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 demystify oh God, yeah. the actual the process of modifying. Yeah. And like if you can do it in a shawl, then it, it should be able to give you the confidence to move mm. a little bit into garments and doing small tweaks and seeing how things are modular. So if you can block off the section, mm. that's maybe the stitch pattern. But then, you know, you maybe want narrower shoulders. You mm. can bring your stitches in. So the idea being that everything can be modified and having it in something where size isn't important and feeling comfortable with that mm. means that when you do care about sizing, you got the tools or, yeah. and the confidence, it sounds yeah. like, as well, to go make all the changes. Yeah. yeah. Well, now I kind of want to add butterfly details too. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, yeah. To be swatched. continued. <laughs> Next time round, we are going to challenge you to do like butterfly swatches and all kinds of yarn. Okay, so you're all witnesses that I did bring that to myself. Okay, okay, we'll do that. I wonder. So you were saying like, does the butterfly stitch go well with with chunkier wools? Do you think? It's going to look totally different, but mm. I think it's one of those that you'd have to see it on a swatch. Like I, mm. I, I, I. I in my head, I'm seeing it on this, and I'm like, oh no, it's mohair. But it will create a totally different effect. Mm. So I, it, it, that would need a swatch. Like it would actually need a swatch to see how it behaves. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> Bringing more work to myself. <laughs> and you can do also do it like with this kind of striping. It also creates kind of an interesting effect as well. Mm. Like this one, even you know, it's it's one color. But if you have quite dramatic colors, mm. it's going to you know, you're going to have stripes as well as the butterfly running through it. So it's kind of like you've got two things going on, you know. Mm. Um, I'm looking down here. Stephanie sounds exciting and slightly intimidating. Uh, you learned a lot of new things during the knit along, um, but you're falling behind. You'll endeavor to keep going. And I will repeat, as we say always, it's absolutely not a race. The pattern's not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. So just go at a pace that you're learning you're having fun and you're not feeling under pressure because it's we will be there whether it's you know two weeks or two months from now that you're finishing this up to mm. actually cheer you on at the finish line so mm. just go at a pace it's that not works homework. It really no it's isn't. not it's just, if you're not yeah. if it's feeling like pressure my advice is 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 take your foot off the accelerator mm. and and hit a pace that feels comfortable for you um that's yeah because because knitting knitting's for fun <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes we just because we get a, i'm sure everybody will relate to that in the comments it's like when you say you're a knitter people are like oh that must be so relaxing and you're like <laughs> oh the things i could just tell them like and then just kind of taking that step back and relaxing and sometimes like instead of bringing my knitting 
wherever I'm going, I'm like, you know what? I'll just read a bit of my book, and it yeah. just, I feel like sometimes shake it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, and it's almost like crossword puzzles. It's like if if I get stuck on a knit and the stitch count is just not there, and I've done it three times, and I just just you have away. to take a break, yeah. yeah, and then going back later, it'll be like it's just going to be in your face. of so like, oh yeah, that was yeah, yeah. I I will say that I'm probably the worst person in the world at taking my own advice. Like I I'll put that out there right now <laughs> that. I've got, I'm finishing off the spring knit along, which is turning out very nice. One sleeve left, one sleeve left, almost oh, yeah. there. And I've got another scarf on the needles and I've got a two thirds of the second sock for one of my children who I really should be knitting for because they're going away this weekend. But yet I just want to get the other stuff done when I should just put it down and take two days to finish the sock. So mm -hmm. yes, my own, I, I have created too many um, somewhat artificial uh constructs i yeah, suppose yeah. Since... Well, like, i think to me the ideal number of of, of whips uh, would be two like with two then i get to alternate and like i have the brainy one and the easy one usually kind of works out that yeah. way or something then three i find it harder to balance three is i know well, <laughs> sorry <laughs> progress is slow with three yeah. it means that even if you spend a couple of hours knitting if you're moving around because mm -hmm. it's not several nights in a row usually you don't see dramatic progress and so that's often the problem i run into is mm. that you need to ha sit down for a few days and then you see progress so it feels like nothing's mm. happening and then you realize it's because well it's been three days since i knit and what you expect right <laughs> yeah. um okay. but we'll get there they will all get there mm. um I do want to, let me just make sure. No, I don't think I have any more questions. Pop them up there again if you have any questions. It sounds like you're all getting on really well. Uh, like most people, like looking through a knit hub, people are very excited. And somebody was, uh, yeah, I love the fact that somebody said that butterfly stitch is now their new favorite stitch and that they didn't like mohair before this and they do now, which is really cool. As I think mohair is, it requires you to take a chill pill. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> You have to go slow with mohair because it snags. It looks nice afterwards, but it just it requires a little a little bit of slowness. So if you're a very fast knitter, I think it may that may be part of the frustration is you actually need to slow it down a little bit. Um, but otherwise, it, it is it's lovely afterwards. It feels nice and it looks nice and it's got a great depth to it. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure I take a couple of minutes before we finish up to talk about our spring season. So. There's several of you who have already been in the season for, and have renewed coming in. So thank you very much. It's lovely to know that you want to continue and learn what we're talking about in the next season coming up. Anyone who's sitting on the fence or thinking about it, if you want to learn about lace knitting and you want to knit a, knit a lace shawl, then this is the season to jump in. This was designed by Bristol Ivy and she's got, she's a very... Um, She's a technical pattern writer and, you know, she's very careful, really good details, but it's, it looks complex when you finish it, but the, in, it's each individual piece isn't. And so it's, in, in, it builds from a modular point of view and it's very, it's very clever how the whole thing's put together. Um, so I've been knitting through it because when I'm doing the videos, I'm obviously knitting through each stage. And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of mentally piecing it together. And so it means that I can take the video and say, this is how it fits together. This is the start here. And this piece fits in over here and here. And this is the same. It's just a little different. And it was, so it's really satisfying. So I think that because I've come in afterwards and looking at somebody else's pattern, I'm, I can give you a slightly higher level overview. And I think that helps to understand. I often like to have, it's like having a roadmap before you start mm. somewhere and getting a really good feel for oh, this is what's happening. And it means that if something goes wrong, you've got this picture of where you should be going. So it's easier to find where the problem is. And we'll kind of, again, markers like with this are mm -hmm. great because if you mark each section, you know if your stitch count is off, where it's off. And we kind of take a look at ways you can fix that or common mistakes so that you don't have to rip the whole thing back, but can just kind of fix that small section that's off. So all of that stuff is going to be in the club. So if you want to learn about that, come in. So that's on the digital club. It's also in the full club. And in the full club, the yarn you're going to get is, <laughs> this is the most luscious yarn I think we've ever felt. It's got, I, I, have you felt? You felt I it, have, haven't you? <laughs> of course. I would not miss out on such an opportunity. It's so nice. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, it's you can see it's got this lovely halo. Nice. Ooh, here we go. It's got this lovely halo to it because mm. it is a baby alpaca. So I think it's at seventy percent. I believe I don't want to be a liar now. Yep, seventy percent baby alpaca, twenty percent silk, and ten percent cashmere. So it's yeah, really, you really can't go wrong with that. <laughs> But it's very, it's very slippy. It's very smooth, which is actually really nice for lace because you want it to be open. You don't want to have it tight. So knitting it loosely really works in your favor for this. And it's something you want over your shoulders and near your skin because it feels really nice. Um, yeah, it, I, I, what, I, that's about as much as you can say. <laughs> there was a few people asking about this color. Um, this one is the, the dough color. It's the, this is the subtle one. Correct. Yes, Laura. Subtle one. Um, and it is it is a kind of a creamy, a beigey cream. Someone was asking if there was a little hints of pink and there isn't really. Mm -hmm. And we suspect that it might have just been because some of the photographs had them together. And sometimes when you've got colors next to each other, they reflect black on each other. But there isn't really pinks in this. This is really kind of a, a cream with a kind of a, a, a beige ish hint to it. Laura probably has better words for that. My wording when it comes to these neutral colors is not good. <laughs> and these are semi solid as well. You can see there's a little bit of tonal oh. variation. Yes, I knew Laura had a good word for it. She's just popped it up there. Light toast. That is exactly what it is. If you like your toast lightly toasted, this is the color <laughs> it would be, <laughs> which is perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, they're gorgeous and they're, they are like having a little animal around. Mm -hmm. Um, I will warn you, do be very, very careful if you have small cats in the house that you will have to put these under lock and key because they will love them even more than you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always a sign of the good stuff when your cat just sits on it a lot. But there, yeah. it's alpaca. I've discovered alpaca yeah. is, is what like particularly brushed alpaca, so cumulus, if mm -hmm. I bring that home. She'll actually open up my knitting bag and dig it out. I don't like I I don't know how she does it, so I can only keep it in zipped bags or oh, ziplock bags. That's adorable. Because <laughs> I, I found her before. And it's like, what are you doing? And like she literally, you'll just see her tail sticking out of the bag, and she's pulled it, and she's doing the the kitten thing of like running around and the trail between oh, yeah. the sofa and the chairs, and you're like, am I living in a cartoon world? <laughs> My my mom my mom was always into mohair hair, so was the cat. Like yeah. the cat would like you know, she would have a pick of on which <laughs> she would sit and it would always be mohair. Um I'm just looking down here. Fiona was saying her happy place is one work in progress. And Eileen said, you can get the knitting done, but you must have about six shawls waiting to be blocked. And the two cats want to help. <laughs> and you finally found a door that they can't open. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to wind it up. We've been with you for a half an hour, which I think is long enough. And we we better we better go on, go on our way for the rest of the evening. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting with you today and um, come back in a couple of weeks time. And I will get to share our final knit along shawl, Mr. Knit along shawl. The reveal will be out. And uh, the Celtic Knits Club will also have launched that point. So I'll get to share all of those uh, different pieces with you. So whether you're in the club or whether you're just curious, come along. And it's going to be a big reveal on the 20, I believe it's the 21st, Thursday 21st at 3.30. So uh, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it because it's going to be a lot of fun. And thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.